Let's recap the first 25 days of the Biden administration. 52 executive orders or executive actions, however they are defined, but uh, essentially dictatorial edicts, which remember... Biden called out Trump for issuing three or four during his first week. Yeah, uh, that's aged about as well as Nancy Pelosi's facelifts. And now you can add your first political scandal because he's walking back something Joe Biden is that he directly said not long after taking office within that first few days there before the first official week was over. And it involves the media. It involves the media not standing in perfect solidarity with the Biden administration because what we have here is Deputy Press Secretary T.J. Ducklow. Okay, he lashed out a journalist, Tara Palmieri, who worked for Axios. Oh, I'm sorry, Tara Palmieri works for Politico over a relationship he had with a certain reporter at Axios. Let's get into the Vanity Fair story. This is the source material. White House official tried to quash a story about a relationship with a reporter by issuing threats and using derogatory language to another reporter pursuing it. According to two sources familiar with the incident, in a sympathetic profile Monday, people revealed that White House Press Secretary T.J. Ducklow is dating Axios political reporter Alexi McCammond. Feels like entertainment tonight drivel. But it's important because what happened after this, so do follow along who covered the Joe Biden campaign. But behind the scenes, Ducklow had previously rushed out, or lashed out at political reporter Tara Palmieri, who was reporting the story, exhibiting behavior that led to a tense meeting between Washington news outlets, editors, and senior White House officials. I'm going to skip that line because we got to get back to it with the decision that's come out of this. The confrontation began on Inauguration Day, January 20th, after Palmieri, a co-author of Politico's playbook, contacted McCammond for comment while one of her male colleagues left a message for Ducklow, according to sources. Ooh, mystery sources. But this has all been confirmed, so we can kind of believe these sources. Ducklow subsequently called a playbook editor to object to the story, but was told to call the playbook reporters with his concerns. But instead of calling the male reporter who initially contacted him, Ducklow tried to intimidate Palmieri by phone in an effort to kill the story. I don't understand why he's so fucking bent out of shape by this, but he he's quite perturbed by this and um considering this little fruit stature i don't know how aggressive he could be but i guess he felt like a real man pressuring some women i will destroy you or your shins because he doesn't look all that tall ducklow told her according to sources adding that he would ruin her reputation if she published it this is such a big deal i don't get it a deputy press secretary fucking somebody in the media for the past four years it's just been the other way around and we all kind of anticipated this type of behavior would happen underneath a Biden administration, so what, what's he so bent out of shape over? I don't get it. Shall we go back and list all of the Democratic operatives that have fucked their way into the media? Like, what's her name? The un, the unhinged bitch who held that uh, Trump town hall on NBC. Uh, she had the pink suit. It was the one for the second town hall meeting that got scrapped after, yeah, the one that got canceled. Named Saman Samantha Guthrie. Guthrie, right? Yeah, she's married to somebody who worked exclusively or on the Biden, or not the Biden team, the Obama team. Kristen Welker is the exact same way, the one who moderated the final debate. Like, and George George Stephanopoulos was the communications director for Bill Clinton. Like, this is not something uncommon for Democrats to do, so whatever. During the off-the-record off call, Ducklow made de derogatory and misogynistic comments. I bet you he has a self-proclaimed feminist. I guarantee it. This type of behavior exclusively comes from those creeps. Accusing, accusing Paul Mary of only, record, only reporting on his relationship, which due to the ethics questions that factor into the relationship between a journalist and White House officials, it hasn't stopped them in the past, and it's not like anybody would really press him on it, falls under the purview of her reporting beat because she was jealous that an unidentified man in the past had wanted to... <gasps> Fuck? Oh no, McCammond. Uh, she's a fairly attractive. She looks mixed, uh, half black, half something. Pretty decent, pretty decent. So I don't blame whoever this unidentified man is. And yeah, Paul Mary had no previous relationship with McCammond and uh, it was just reporting on something. Following day, an editor at Politico reached out to the White House about Ducklow's threats, spurring multiple conversations between the news outlet and senior level officials on January 21st. Remember, January 21st, it is February 12th. It's weird how this stuff is just coming out right now. Spurring multiple conversations between the news outlets and senior level officials on January 21st, including White House Press Secretary Jen Circleback Pisaki. White House Communications Director Kate Bedingfield and Biden Senior 
advisor, Anita Dunn, and I'm sure that they were all very sympathetic to a woman trying to report on the behavior of another woman. The way that these catty little circles go, I think that, yeah. It kind of speaks for itself. In one of those calls, senior White House officials acknowledged that Ducklow's handling of the call with Primary was inappropriate and said she would not send a note to her apologizing for the comments. Oh, he would. In another conversation, the same White House officials took aim at Palmieri by accusing her of breaking an off-the-record agreement with Ducklow and pressing Paul Politico as to why the contacts of her call have been revealed. Oh my god, it's almost like she's doing journalism. Paul Mary had only informed her editors the contents of the call, which she said transcribed into her notes, and it was happening, oh, as it was happening, after they asked her about it. Paul Mary declined to comment. Pisaki and Ducklow did not immediately respond to the request for comment. After publication, Pisaki issued a statement. TJ Ducklow has apologized to a reporter with whom he had a heated conversation about his personal life. He is the first to acknowledge this is not the standard of behavior set out by the president. In addition to his initial apology, he has set a reporter a personal note expressing his profound regret. And those are always, always meant straight from the heart. With the approval of the White House Chief of Staff, he has been placed on a one-week suspension without pay. In addition, when he returns, he will no longer be assigned to work with any reporters at Politico. But feel free to continue to fuck whoever you deem appropriate. That kind of flies right in the face of a certain policy that Biden put out. And something that I remember watching, and I remember when he said this as well. White House's decision, this is a report by Breitbart, to keep Ducklow appears to violate a pledge made by Biden to terminate members of his administration who conduct themselves disrespectfully towards others. In the January 21st video conference, Biden assured his staff this was the one that was in a dark room and he had a bunch of monitors around him and it looked like the deepest of deep state meetings with a bunch of faceless, nameless people who control the world. It was fucking weird. It looked like it could have been straight out of Batman the Animated Series. Like, there's shadowy individuals. Biden assured his staff that his administration will lead with core American values and humility and trust. Everybody is entitled to be treated with decency and dignity. Unless you're trying to bust open a story about people that are in the Biden administration. Oh, fuck. That's been missing in big ways the last four years. Oh, really? Has it? I'm not joking when I say this. If you ever work with me and I hear you treat another colleague with disrespect, talk down to someone, like say, I will destroy you. I promise I will fire you on the spot. On the spot. No ifs, ands, or buts. Let me remind you that uh, TJ Ducklow has been placed on a one-week suspension and he will not be working with anybody in Politico. Does that sound like firing? Does that sound like... Uncle Joe living up to the promise that is America. No, of course it doesn't. Remember everyone who voted for Biden. You guys wanted this return to normalcy. Business as usual. That's what was provided. And that is exactly what we're getting right now. All of these stories that are just bubbling under the surface. The, frankly, this entire story could have been completely avoided by saying, yeah, have you seen her? I want to fuck her. That's fine. Oh, potential ethics violations. That hasn't stopped anybody in the past, so stop trying to fucking raise that. It's just this soy boy didn't want to be caught because, ooh, it's much, it's much more exciting to be sneaky. Fucking yuck. I don't anticipate this will go anywhere because we're heading into the weekend and something will come out and uh, Biden or er, Donald Trump's impeachment is going on right now. They're into the question period right now, so I don't know if it's going to wrap up, but uh, by the end of the day, I'll probably review the entire the entirety of Trump's defense team because they wrapped it up in three hours. It was impressive. It was thorough. It was about as big of a fucking as Ducklow wanted to lay on McCammon. So yeah, frankly, I don't care, but I also didn't set a high bar for the Biden administration to follow through on their words, and I'm surprised it only took a month. I would have thought in the first couple of weeks that we would have had a ethics concern, but being Canadian over the past few years, you kind of just uh, get used to your elected officials just skating by on severe ethics violations. What's Trudeau on his fourth? Anyways, guys, I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.